That, ladies and gentlemen, is the infamous yellow light of death on the PlayStation 3. Some of you may know what this is, some of you may not. But, if you have it, there's a good chance that it is a problem with either the CPU or the GPU separating from the board. What happens is the solder gets hot from just normal use, and the solder melts and loses contact with the board. Uh, there's a 90, probably a good 90% chance that this is your problem if you have the yellow light of death. Uh, there is also a couple of reasons that you'll get this. Uh, one being a bad power supply. But of the ones I've seen, this is the most common problem, is the CPU or GPU uh, separating from the board. I'm going to show you today how to disassemble and do a proper reflow of the solder. Uh, you're going to need a couple parts. You're going to need, of course, screwdrivers, uh, some Torx drivers, and a heat gun. Okay, first and foremost, I take no responsibility for anything bad that happens while you do this. It's a pretty straightforward uh, process if you're somewhat familiar with electronics and just an all-around general handy person. Uh, if you don't want to attempt this, you can send your PlayStation 3 back to Sony and they will fix it for $150 plus tax and whatever. Uh, me, I'm cheap. I like to try to fix things myself and that's why I decided to do this. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the hard drive. The hard drive is behind this little door. You simply lift up the corner. That exposes the hard drive. Very important, get a screwdriver that fits this blue screw. Otherwise, you will strip the head. There have been a lot of reports of people stripping heads on these, and it's going to be next to impossible to get out if you strip it. With my proper screwdriver, I'm simply going to take it out. Fairly simple, if you have the proper tools. Slide it back, well, towards the front of the PS3, rather, and pull it out. This is an upgraded hard drive that I bought. It is a 500 gig. And after you do that, you're most likely going to have a warranty sticker right here across this little uh, uh, rubber foot. Mine is gone because I've had this apart several times. By the way, this is my second time doing this. The first time it lasted for probably two or three months. And uh, just out of the blue, I got the yellow light of death again. This is a 60 gigabyte model. It is a launch system unit. You simply take that screw out that's exposed once you take that rubber foot off. It is a Torx head. Once that screw is out, the top slides to the left, exposing other screws. Uh, there are screws marked with arrows. Anywhere there's an arrow, you need to remove that screw. To save time, I'll remove these screws and we'll start up again. Okay, now that we have the screws out, what you want to do, simply lift from the back and it folds forward. Now if you have a 60 or an 80 gig model like myself, you want to be careful during this process because there's a ribbon cable attaching the memory card readers. Disconnect that and the top is off. Also, you want to make sure this is disconnected from any power supply before you attempt this. Bad things happen when people try to tinker with electronics while they're plugged in. Then what you want to do is remove the Blu-ray drive. There's a connector here. I believe that's for the power. Then be careful when you do this because there's a big ribbon cable underneath of it. You just simply lift these little tabs and the cable slides out. Next, you want to remove the Bluetooth uh, antenna, or I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi antenna. Well, this could be Bluetooth, I'm not 100% sure. Single screw. That comes off. And next we'll remove this. Four screws. 
you might want to keep the screws organized, maybe even lay them out. Take pictures while you do this so you can remember where they go when you put it back together. I've done this enough times, I don't need to do that. There's another ribbon cable you need to disconnect here. Once again, you lift up on the little tab and it comes loose. And another ribbon cable underneath. Now that's out of the way. Next, we're going to remove the power supply. There's a connector here and a connector in the back. There are a total of six screws here, one of which is a ground. The ground screw has a washer on it. Try not to get that mixed up with the other screws. And our power supply is now removed. Alright, the next thing you want to do is remove the switch for the power in inject. There's also a ribbon cable on there. You want to flip the tab up, pop that ribbon cable out, and there are two screws here and two screws here. You want to remove those. And that will release the power switch and the bracket that it sits on. Uh, next we're going to remove these screws, like the top case, these are also marked with arrows. Now all of these are Phillips screws, but there are going to be two that are smaller in size. Don't we'll try to use the same screwdriver, you'll just strip them, have problems. And the smaller screws I was talking about are there and there. Basically what these two screws do is hold the protective casing together, it protects the motherboard. You can take those out now or later, I choose to take them out now. Alright, now this should come out. There we go. Set this to the side. Now there are some plastic tabs here here and three on the bottom that removes the back side and that releases that and now we're getting down to the nitty gritty Next we're going to remove the fan, there's a connector here, simply remove that, and there are three screws that hold that in. After those three screws are removed, the fan just pops out. You'll notice there's another tab here, that just aligns it up with this notch, so you can't put the fan in backwards. Now while you've got it apart, that would be a good time to blow out any dust. Uh, this, Like I said, this has been apart here fairly recently. So I don't have any dust accumulated on this one. All right, next you're going to want to disconnect the battery. This is what keeps your memory when the system is unplugged. Fairly straightforward. There are also two screws that hold the hard drive bay in. You want to remove those. Once again, you want to use the proper size screwdrivers. It will save a lot of headaches in the long run. 